All right, welcome. I got the official sign. We are live. All right. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, guys. Hey. There's a massive group coming in. I know. <laughs> I say that every week. You guys just, you never laugh at it. Uh, we have a big group. We have a big crowd. We're excited to be here. Welcome those of you who are joining us on Facebook. Um, use the comment section. Let us know you're here. Everybody doing all right? Sarah's doing great. She's waving. Do you have a question? Yeah. No, I'm just <laughs> I don't have any announcements this morning that I know of. Are there any announcements for... Uh, middle school's taking their retreat this weekend. Middle school's taking their retreat this weekend. All right. Very good. So we want to move through uh, his courts with praise this morning. Uh, we want to wake our hearts up, wake our minds, our souls up, and we'll sing a song of praise this morning. So feel free to join in as you're able. Uh, we want to sing, uh, sing to our Lord this morning. Anyway, we are here in his presence. Uh, will you stand with me this morning? Will you stand with me? Those of you who are joining on Facebook Live, use that comment section. Uh, let us know some things that you're thankful for. We want to lift up some thanksgivings this morning. It's an act of worship. Uh, but before we move through his courts, will you join me in our call to worship? Will you join me? 
So happy are the people whose sins are forgiven. God's forgiveness is poured over them as a healing balm. Happy are the people who place their trust in God. God's, God's presence is their guide and their strength. So come, let us worship the God who forgives and heals us. Let us celebrate God's presence with us each day. Amen. Amen, amen. So we want to continue to move through his courts with praise. Remember, these aren't just songs. These aren't just melodies. These are prayers. These are proclamations of our faith and about who we are in Christ. So feel free uh, to sing. Feel free to pray the words or just allow them to flow over you and through you as an act of worship this morning. And we want to continue to have a heart of worship and dwell on things uh, and give thanksgivings. Dwell on those things that we're thankful for that God has done for us uh, throughout the morning. One of those things we can be thankful for, we'll sing about here, as being a child of God, or a child of God. So will you sing with me? Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? That's right. I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love. Oh, his love, oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free, always oh, free and I'm a child of God, yes, I am. Free at last, he has ransomed.
Oh, you unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. Oh, I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God. Yeah. Oh, I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. Oh, I've been born again into your family. things that we're thankful for, and we want to share those today. Uh, we also want to share uh, joys, and we want to share any of those concerns. So uh, we feel free to go ahead and, and uh, speak those into the room. I'm going to jump down here and grab a mic, if that's all right. Any joys or concerns? Anything at all? Anything at all? Well, it's finally starting to get warmer. What? <laughs> the weather's getting warmer. <laughs> we're yeah, let me grab this mic here so we can... Facebook crew can hear us. All right, so those of you who are joining on Facebook Live, feel free to use that comment section. Let us know. Joy's concerns, things are just, you're just thankful for in general. So the weather's warming up as I drive into Fort Wayne, and it's three degrees on the thermometer. <laughs> anything at all, anything at all, anything. 
Concern? Concern? The suicide rate going up at the high school. Suicide rate going up at the high school? High schools in general? Uh, I know in the, the musical world that I work in, I think I've mentioned this many times before, but there's guys that, and, and gals that um, you probably have never heard of as far as musicians are concerned. Uh, they're smaller, uh, mid-level touring bands, but they, that's what they make their living on. They live on the road, and uh, when COVID hit, uh, the only thing that they know how to do stopped. Um, you know, there's some of my friends uh, have expressed concerns about being suicidal because I don't know what to do now. I don't know what to, I've been touring for 30 years. I don't know what to do. So, yeah, we definitely want to lift those people up in prayer. Any, anything else? Anything else, Brian? Our dog is sick right now. Don't know what's right wrong with him. The family pet is sick. That's always stressful. It's always stressful. So prayers for that. Anything at all? Joys? My wife's here. She sang today. That was always fun. That's a joy for me. Hopefully it's a joy for you. <laughs> She's a lot cuter than I am. <laughs> Anything at all? Anything at all? Joys of the giggles of your kids. Oh, my kids? Yeah. <laughs> Loud, obnoxious. If they were in here, it'd be kind of interesting. They are. So joys, the sounds of life, the sounds of life in the building. Anything else? Anything else? Well, I know for myself, I'm having a little bit of some sciatic pain, so if we could... You would pray for me on that. I suppose it's more irritating than a, a, anything else. So, anything at all, anything at all. Everyone's amazing. <laughs> well, why don't you pray? Uh, would you pray with me right now, uh, and then we'll move forward uh, through His courts this morning. So let's pray. God, uh, Father God, you have heard uh, some concerns. You knew those before we even spoke them. Those concerns that were not spoken, God, you know them. You know them. And we lift them to you. We, we put them in your hand and we pray that your will be done in those. God, we pray for healing uh, in the situations where healing is needed. We pray that the hands of the healers will be guided, those doctors and anyone else that is uh, involved in that your hand is in that and your will will be done we pray for any kind of family strife or financial strife anything at all lord the world has been turned upside down you know you know <laughs> help us help us be with us god there are so many things to be thankful for uh the weather warming up i guess and uh the snow as beautiful as it as it is uh, it is something to be thankful for and, and your revelation being shown uh, in that and, uh, and the majesty and the beauty and that it can hold. God, there's other things to be thankful for, the ability to meet together so freely. We thank you for that where there are brothers and sisters in Christ around the world who are unable to meet so freely. We pray for them as well. We pray for them and may we have an extra measure of, uh, of praise and a heart of worship Lord, that maybe it may pour over onto them as well. Lord, we bless them through you. We ask uh, for you uh, to be with them as well. Those in our community who need help, God, help us to see them. Bring them to our attention so that we can meet those needs. Help us to be Christ in the world uh, right immediately around us, uh, Lord, that we sometimes tend to forget. So, God, we give you thanks. We give you praise. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning. people in here and we want we, we welcome you at, online but uh, those of you who are here this morning good morning good morning, good morning. okay that's a little better but <laughs> how many of you have not had your coffee yet this morning <laughs> well I do I do welcome all of you here this morning it's good to be together uh, we again welcome you online with us as well um, we have begun the season of Lent in the church. 
And that's the, the 40 days, not including Sundays, before Easter. And so we are on the journey now preparing ourselves for Easter. Uh, we have decided to continue with our series on the book of Acts. Um, and we will do that all the way through Easter. And uh, what we see today as we continue in Acts is Luke's narrative shifting from the dramatic conversion of Saul and the beginning of his Christian ministry as Paul back to the Apostle Peter. At the end of chapter 9, we have two stories of Peter performing miracles as he traveled about the country, preaching and teaching in Jesus' name. Both of these mirror miracles that Jesus performed, and now we see that Jesus' power to heal is realized through the apostles. The first is a paralytic who had been bedridden for eight years, and Peter tells him, Jesus Christ heals you. Now get up and roll up your mat. And he got up and walked. And then Peter was summoned to Joppa, where Tabitha, a disciple, had died. And after Peter prayed, he told her to get up. And she did. Both of these miracles cause more people to believe in Jesus. And that brings us to chapter 10 in Acts. And we're going to be looking at chapter 10, the whole chapter today. Now we talk a lot in the church about the scripture that says to love your neighbor as yourself. And the story of the Good Samaritan shows us that even though we think uh, those we think might be our enemies are considered neighbors of ours in God's eyes. And yet, somehow, we still harbor bigotry in our hearts, even though we know deep down it's wrong. And it might, it might not be just the obvious things like racism, which is so prevalent even today in our society. We tend not to love our neighbors who are different in just small ways. I shared part of a paper with you last year that we found on my nephew's, uh, my nephew Mitchell's computer after he passed away. And we were a few months into the pandemic, so many of you probably didn't uh, hear that sermon. Mitchell had muscular dystrophy, uh, a degenerative muscle disease which confined him to a wheelchair the majority of his life. No one knew what the paper that he'd written was for, but Here's some of what he wrote in that paper. He said, I knew my disability would make it challenging, but I've never seen it as inhibiting me. Since I was required to use a wheelchair, I have experienced the occasional person who assumes that I am mentally as well as physically handicapped. Some see a wheelchair and assume that the person in it suffers from more than just a physical disability. It has happened less as I have become an adult, but it still happens from time to time. One thing that has always bothered me is when I was with my parents and someone we'd meet would ask them, his mother and dad, how I was doing. While I appreciated the gesture, I would rather them ask me directly. Sometimes people would speak to me in a childish sounding voice like they might to a small child. Another thing I do not like is when disabled people are segregated from able-bodied people. I understand that it can't always be helped, but I think people being around the disabled can be a positive thing. Whether we realize it or not, we do this all the time. We see someone who is different from us, and it might just be a small difference, and we place a label on them, and we treat them differently. Except it may just be a minor difference that we have, but many people today still let stereotypes form an impression instantly. Whether it's the color of your skin, or a disability, or cultural difference, or one of many, many differences that we could list right now. We all have the tendency to discriminate in some way if it's someone that's different from us. 
And the Jewish people that we read about in the Bible were no different. In fact, they had rules set up concerning who they could or couldn't associate with, whose house they could or couldn't visit in. And Gentiles, Gentiles were the people who were not Jewish, were included in those in that list who they weren't supposed to have anything to do with. And that's what, that's what makes chapter 10 in Acts one of the greatest turning points in the history of the church. This account is the story of Cornelius, a Gentile. So let's look at the scripture starting chapter 10, verse 1. At Caesarea there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian Regiment. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? He asked. The angel answered, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of his attendants. He told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. Now here's what we know about Cornelius from this scripture. He was a centurion in the Italian regiment, which would be similar to, to being a sergeant in our military. It says that he and his family were God-fearing. Now that was a term that they used back then to describe some Gentiles who, who actually believed in one God, not the many gods of their pagan religions. And while they didn't subscribe to the, the laws of Judaism, including circumcision, they attended the synagogue. He was also charitable, it says, and he prayed. And then he had this specific vision telling him to send for Peter, which he sent his attendants to do. And as they traveled from Caesarea to Joppa, which was about 40 miles away, Peter had his own vision, starting in verse 9 of the chapter 10th chapter. About noon the following day as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles and birds. Then a voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times. And immediately the sheep was taken back to heaven. Now the reason this vision is significant is because the Jews had strict food laws, which we find in Leviticus 11. They could eat only animals which chewed the cud and whose hooves were cloven. All the others were unclean and prohibited. Now Peter couldn't believe that God would want him to eat these unclean animals that he saw in this vision. But the voice told him not to call what God had cleansed unclean. This happened three times so that it was clear to Peter that, that saying he wouldn't misunderstand it. And now we see that this was the preparation for receiving the visitors who were coming that were being sent by Cornelius. So continuing at verse 17. While Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. They called out, asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Simon, 
Three men are looking for you. So get up and go downstairs, and do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. Peter went down and said to the men, I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? The men replied, We have come from Cornelius the centurion. He is a righteous and God-fearing man who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to ask you to come to his house so that he could hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the men into the house to be his guests. Now remember, a strict Jew would have had no contact with a Gentile. They definitely would not have had one as a guest. But you see what Peter did here? He asked these Gentile messengers into the house and showed them hospitality. Now the scripture continues by saying that Peter and some of the believers went with them the next day and traveled to Cornelius' house. And when Peter arrived at Caesarea, Cornelius must have wondered if, if Peter would actually come into his house because of the whole Jewish-Gentile thing. And in fact, when he invited Peter in, Peter went in. And he found a large gathering of people inside the house. Verse 28, he said to them, You are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius goes about telling him of the vision that he had and that they were, uh, uh, and that they were there now to listen to everything that the Lord had commanded Peter to tell them. Continuing verse 34, then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one from whom the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. It's important to understand at this point that, that barriers had been broken down right here. Huge barriers for Peter. He now understood that God accepted all people, not just the Jewish race. God's love extends to everyone, no matter who they are. But what it doesn't say, it doesn't say that everyone is automatically saved, no matter what. Peter lays out the gospel for this group of Gentiles assembled at Cornelius' house. They were seeking God before this time. But now they knew that Jesus died so that they could receive forgiveness of their sins through him. And then what some call the Gentile Pentecost experience, verse 44, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles. 
For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. This was a turning point because these were the first Gentiles brought into the early Christian church. Because Peter followed God's direction, the new movement that they were part of became the Christian church. If this hadn't happened, then, then Christianity may have just become a division of Judaism. But God's plan was greater. God's love extends to all people. And this was obviously an important part of the story for Luke as he was writing it. Because he follows this scripture with another retelling of the entire story in the first part of chapter 11. And then it comes up again in chapter 15 when Peter addresses the apostles and the elders in a special council. He told them this, starting in verse 7 in chapter 15. Brothers, you know that some time ago God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips the message of the gospel and believe. God, who knows the heart, showed that he accepted them by giving the Holy Spirit to them just as he did to us. He did not discriminate between us and them, for he purified their hearts by faith. And this is the precursor to Paul's ministry to the Gentiles. We'll see that Paul reaches Gentiles far and wide from this point on. And we have to be thankful ourselves for that, that they extended it and, it, and, it, and let everyone know outside of the Jewish race that God's love is for us also. Today, we've got to realize that God's love extends to everyone, no matter who they are or what they've done. And the important thing is that we're the vessels that carry God's love today to those who don't know him. And when we see someone that's a little bit different from the way we are, we've got to let the barriers come down. We've got to be willing to develop normal and healthy relationships with those folks. The, the statistics would say that pretty much everyone has someone that they encounter in their day-to-day -day lives that is different from them and realizing it or not, we either dismiss them or ignore them. As Christians, we've got to break down the barriers that divide us. Whatever those barriers may be. God's message of love and salvation is spread through the relationships that we build. And if we only build relationships with people that are pretty much just like us, then we're doing a disservice to lots and lots and lots of people out there that, that are, are aching to know of God's love. As Mike and the worship team come back up for our final song, I want you to think about this. Who can you think of right now in your life that there's a barrier in between you and them? Whatever kind of barrier, small or big, think of that person. You may be the only person that is ever able to convey God's love to them. So crush the barrier and develop a relationship with them. Be God's vessel for God's love. Amen. Christ is enough. 
Christ is my reward and all my devotion. Now there's nothing in this world that could ever satisfy. Through every trial, my soul will sing. No turning back, I've been set free. Oh, Christ is enough for me. Christ is enough for me. Oh, everything I need is in me. Oh, everything I And this hope will never fail Heaven is our home Through every soul My soul will see Jesus is near To God be the glory Christ is enough. 
Christ is enough. If you haven't decided to follow Christ, today is a great day to do it. When we call on Jesus Christ as our Savior, repent of our sins, He forgives. He forgives. And then we get to live with God in heaven for eternity. Go from this place knowing that and having the peace that passes all understanding and knowing that you may be the Jesus that someone else needs to see. Break down the barriers. Go in peace. Have a great week. Amen.